robotics has traditionally relied on rigid materials and bulky designs that limit the mobility and applications of conventional robots. Recently, researchers have looked to nature for inspiration to design robots capable of mimicking the movements of plants and animals. I'm Matthew Hardcastle, and in this episode of Science Sessions, we're delving into the world of bio-inspired robots, which can go places and do things that conventional robots cannot. Springtails are small arthropods, known for their explosive jumping ability. For some researchers building robots, they are a potential source of inspiration. Victor Ortega Jimenez of the University of Maine describes the aerial maneuverability of springtails, which inspired a jumping robot. The first step is the takeoff of the springtails. The furcula, that is the jumping organ that they use to slap the surface of the water interface and jump. They are controlling the directionality and also the speed. If they are jumping explosively, they start to move and rotate in midair. When they are in the midair, they bend the body in a U shape and this U shape produce drag. In 20 milliseconds, they stop all the rotations and they ride themselves in midair. The other secret is this structure called the colophore. This is a small tube that they have in the ventral zone because when they are jumping, they collect some water droplet. This water droplet is important because they are lowering the center of gravity and gaining some stability. Once they are landing, the colophore attached to the interface. The robot is the same weight that a honeybee. Not the same size of the springtail, but it's tiny. The robot can jump several times his size, rotates in the midair, and they use some flaps to mimic the curvature of the body. With the same mechanisms of drag, they are riding themselves and landing on his feet. Sam Tofik of the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and his colleagues also looked to insects that jump without using limbs, such as click beetles, to inspire the design of their own jumping robot. Tofik explains the robot's jumping mechanism. Our inspiration was to basically marry the big robot's precision engineering on one side and insects, which can go wherever they want to and have amazing uh, mobility. We had a challenge that we have a very small size constraint that we wanted to work with. So we needed to come up with a way of getting the energy storage and release in a very compact size. In this specific mechanism, you have a single actuator and all it does is it applies compression on a beam. And as it compresses the beam, the beam first buckles and starts being highly bent, storing a lot of elastic energy. And as the actuator just keeps going, it goes to a triggering and release stage that lets the robot jump. There is a heating gun, like your hair dryer, that's currently used to give the energy to these muscles. This is a untethered and self-powered jump. We demonstrate that the robot can be potentially autonomous. Rather than jumping, some bio-inspired robots roll across different terrains. Ji Yin of North Carolina State University and his colleagues drew inspiration from the twisted or helical patterns found in a variety of natural structures, from DNA to plant tendrils. Yin and his colleagues were awarded the 2022 Cazzarelli Prize in Engineering and Applied Sciences for this work. Yin explains the design and capabilities of this rolling robot. From nature, we can see a lot of these kind of helical structures. For example, DNA. The material we're using is called a LCE. It means a liquid crystal elastomer. Is this material heat up? They're gonna change that shape. Now you put this guy on the hot surfaces, for example, like a car roof. This soft robot, you're gonna slightly bend his body and they're gonna keep rolling. I call it a self rolling. So this self rolling is driven by the temperature gradient from the bottom to the top. If we put this robot on the desert in the hot weather, the surface temperature is pretty high. The twist is going to plow into the sand. It's going to be anchor itself. You can climb uphill, downhill like that. So that's the benefit of this kind of twist. The soft robot can change its direction autonomously. When the soft robot met the obstacles, it can change its shape and then quickly snap to a different shape. It can find its way out in the maze Without any human intervention, there's no external controls. Robotic arms are widely used in science and industry today. 
Renee Zhao of Stanford University and her colleagues designed a flexible robotic arm inspired by octopuses and a type of origami fold called a crestling pattern. Zhao explains how this origami arm is controlled. Each crestling unit has a magnetic plate attached and it has in-plane magnetization. When we apply the external magnetic field, since the magnetization of the crestling unit always has to follow the external magnetic field, it generates a magnetic torque. That torque is able to turn the crestling unit from the folded configuration to the deployed configuration or the other way around. If we apply a out-of-plane magnetic field, that will trigger a bending motion. Inspired by the octopus arm, we want to achieve a robotic system that can give us contraction, stretching, bending, and twisting capabilities. The way that we achieve this goal is by assembling many Crestling units, they all have different magnetization directions programmed in a certain way. And now if we apply the external magnetic field, which has a rotational profile, then we can open up the Crestling units one by one to achieve the stretching motion. By reversing the rotational direction of the external magnetic field, we can contract the Crestling origami robotic arm. And we can also program the magnetization direction to control the deployment of certain units of the robotic arm so that we can achieve bending at different locations. We can twist and bend the robotic arm so that it can grab a object and lift it. Octopuses aren't the only animals to inspire robotic arms. Here's Caitlin Becker of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology describing a robotic arm inspired by the tentacles of jellyfish and sea anemones. One of the big challenges with soft robotics is that they'll adapt to whatever object you put them up against, but that also means that it's hard to predict their final shape. This particular gripper is made out of a material that is soft, and it's also made into a structure that is soft. So having those really long noodles with a small diameter means that the overall stiffness is very low. The way that it becomes a robust grasp is all of those low stiffness actuators working together to entangle with an object. One thing that this gripper does really well with is if you don't understand necessarily kind of where the object is placed, you have a little bit of error in where you think the gripper is or where you think the object is. We're not particularly sensitive to positioning error. The trade-off there is that when we're putting these down, this is not something that is designed for high precision. Every grasp is actually different. We're not predicting where we're gonna put the fingers each time. Each of those tiny individual contacts are a little bit different each time, but the effect is the same over large numbers. Some of the areas where this particular gripper shines are grasps where you have a fragile object, objects where they might be topologically complex, and objects that are compliant, and some combination thereof. They're not intended to replace traditional robots, but bio-inspired robots can leverage their unique capabilities for a variety of applications, including remote sensing, search and rescue operations, manufacturing, and medicine. Whatever their inspiration, the robots of the future are likely to be ever more nimble, flexible, and versatile. Thanks for tuning in to Science Sessions. If you like this episode, please consider leaving a review and helping us spread the word.